This video is about library and information centers, concept and role in society. In the modern information society, libraries and information centers have a new role to play. This is due to increasing use of web-based information sources and electronic services. Libraries are also being managed in a more democratic way due to flexible communication system and efficient work organization. Their services are also user-centric. Let us explore the learning objectives of this course. The learning objectives are to explore library and information centers. Let us see the modules in this course. The first one is the definition of a library, purpose and function of a library, role of libraries in society and education, information centers, difference between library and information centers, and libraries, library and information centers of information age. Now, let us move on to the definition of a library. That is the first concept. Word library is derived from the Latin word libraria, meaning a book place. It originates from the term liber, liber, which means a book. A library is defined as a place where literary and artistic materials such as books, periodicals, pamphlets, tapes, newspapers, artifacts, records, prints, etc. are stored. You all are aware of books. Books what we are using right from our childhood. Regarding the periodicals, the periodicals are nothing but the publications which are published in definite or indefinite periodicity. Under periodicals, you have got two categories. One is magazine, the other one is journal. The magazines are nothing but the, peri but the periodicals which are published for entertainment purpose, which covers all subjects. For example, Aval Vigadan, Ananda Vigadan, Reader's Digest, etc. The journals serve for a specific purpose. That is, the journals are used for specific study, field of study. For example, Journal of Library and Information Science serves the library and information science professionals for their academic research activities. So, periodicals are nothing but the publications which are published in definite or indefinite periodicity under the same title. In our college, we are purchasing more than 180 periodicals. In the third picture, you are seeing the pamphlets. A person is issuing the notices. In layman term, we call them as notices. So, whenever a government publishes new schemes, they used to publish this, uh, these pamphlets. And uh, regarding the tapes, here you are seeing an audio tape, which were used in early 80s and 90s. Nowadays, we are using CDs, DVDs and the internet for recording purpose. But at that time, they used these magnetic tapes for recording. The next picture is about the newspapers. Nowadays, we are having both printed print newspapers and electronic newspapers. The newspapers which are printed in papers are called the print newspapers and the newspapers which are available in electronic form or in the internet are called as electronic newspapers or e-newspapers. The next picture is about the artifacts. The artifacts are nothing but the materials available in the museum like the coins, warfare materials, the swords, etc. So all those materials which are preserved in the museum or in the library are called the artifacts. In the top, you are seeing the records. So these records were also used in early 80s and 90s because at that time they don't have the CDs, DVDs or other recording materials. Coming to prints, all the paintings, wall pictures, posters, etc. comes under prints. So all these materials are preserved and are used in the library for reading, reference or lending. Collection of such materials, especially when systematically arranged. Here the phrase systematically arranged is 
very important when the library when the materials in the library are not systematically arranged then it is very difficult for the users to use the library effectively so a system should be followed in each library in order to serve the users in our library we are using the color classification system a room in a private home for such a collection if you have got 50 to 100 books in a home then it is called as a private home library an institution or foundation maintaining such a collection that is a college library a university library or a school library or a library maintained for specific purpose for example the lyco library in madurai is maintained for ophthalmology so such special libraries are also having their own collection so a library is defined as a place in in which literary and artistic materials are kept for reading reference or lending a collection of such materials especially when systematically arranged a room in a private home for such a collection an institution or foundation maintaining such a collection thus the library is a social organization and a necessary unit of the society it is organized for transmitting knowledge and experience of society to individuals suppose if we don't have the libraries then it is not possible for us to know about the previous history of our culture our innovations discoveries etc because the lifespan of the human being is very short so with the help of the recordings we are about to know no and we can find uh, new inventions this is done through books and other materials like the maps charts phono records microfilms etc dr s r ranganathan is a father of library science in india he describes the library as a public institution or establishment charged with the care of collection of books and the duty of making them accessible to those who require using them so what he states is that the library should not act as a storehouse of books but they should lend the books they should be used by the public so that the knowledge can be explored since he is the father of library science in india we have to know some of his biography so when you click on his picture here i have given the link to his biography which which is stated in britannica.com so let us learn some of the points on his biography dr sheetali ramamurthy ranganathan is the father of library science in india he was born on 12th august 1892 in shirkali in tamil nadu and died on 27th september 1972 he was a mathematician and appointed as university librarian in university of madras he traveled to england to study at university college london he was the first one who formulated the major faceted classification system namely colon classification this system only we are following in our library that is the colon classification system other works of his includes classified catalog code in the year 1934 prolegomena to library classification in the year 1937 theory of the library catalog in the year 1938 elements of library classification in the year 1945 classification and international documentation in the year 1948 classification and communication in, in the year 1951 and headings can on the year 1955 his five laws of library science in the year 1931 was widely accepted as a definite definitive statement of the ideal of library service these five laws of library science we are going to study in the forthcoming modules so when you are asked to write about his biography you have to specify all these points now let us learn about the top 3 best libraries of the world when you browse through the internet you can come across 
top 10 best libraries of the world, top 10 beautiful libraries of the world, futuristic libraries of the world, ancient libraries of the world, medica medieval libraries of the world. It's not possible for me to showcase all such libraries in this module. Therefore, I have displayed only the top three best libraries of the world. The first one is the Library of Congress. Here in this picture, you can see the picture of Library of Congress. Here I have specified the website for that library. So you please go to this website and explore a lot, a lot about Library of Congress. This Library of Congress is in Washington DC, United States of America. The Library of Congress is the research library that officially serves the United States Congress and is the de facto national library of the United States. It is the oldest federal cultural institution in the United States. The second top best library of the world is the Bodilian Library, University of Oxford, Europe. Here also I have specified the web link address. You please explore to this. Bodilian Library is the main research library of the University of Oxford and is one of the oldest libraries in Europe. With over 12 million items, it is the second largest library in, in, in Britain after the British Library. Now let us see about the third best libraries of the world. The third best library name is backed by Royal Library, Denmark, Europe. The beautiful picture is shown here with link address. The Royal Library in Copenhagen is the National Library of Denmark and the University Library of the University of Copenhagen. It, it is among the largest libraries in the world and the largest in the Nordic countries. In 2017, it merged with the state and university library to form a combined national library. Without studying about the ancient libraries, this module will not be fulfilled. So, get the facts on eight of the most magnificent libraries of the ancient world in this website. And this website is launched by the famous history channel, history.com. The first picture here depicts the library of Asher Banipal, which is in northern Iraq, which contained clay tablets. It was established in 7th century BC. The middle picture is the Library of Alexandria, which is in Alexandria, Egypt, which contained all sciences, history, law, etc. It was established in 285 to 246 BC. The third picture depicts the Library of Pergamum. The library of Pergamum is in Turkey, which acted as the center of all cultural things. It was established in the 3rd century BC. So let us learn about the other concepts in the forthcoming video. Thank you.